And I hope you do participate. I, I would like to ask, what is the difference between praise and what is the difference between worship? And who can answer that question? We'd like to be uh, participate and answer that question. What is the difference between praise and worship? By the way, uh, thank you, worship team. That was awesome this morning. Praise God. What is the difference? Worship team. Can you help me? Praise is... Praise is just thanking God for who He is, what He's done. And worship is, worship goes a little deeper. Worship is drawing closer to God and, and just drawing revelation on Him. Good. I like to uh, use the, uh, you know, now it's like mom's frying the chicken. I'm in the front room smelling it. And I walk in the kitchen to eat it. <laughs> Amen. Worship as close to God as we could possibly get here on earth, I believe, when you get into deep worship. A lot of times praise is just thanking God, you know, appreciate what he's done, but worship gets in where you can actually uh, hear, feel, and sense, and smell the presence of the Holy Spirit. Many years ago, uh, I had just gotten saved and uh, there was a young lady come to Chillicothe, Missouri, and they rented the auditorium there. And it was a non-denominational meeting, and everybody came. Vicki Jamison, maybe some of you have heard of her. She wore a white dress, and she would dance around the spirit. And they had people there in cots. I mean, it was hopeless to look at them in the natural. And, uh, but they were there. And people believe God was going to touch them and they were going to heal them. And some of them did get healed. I don't know how many, but some did. But right in the middle of her concert and her ministry, the Shekinah Glory filled the auditorium. How many have heard of Shekinah Glory in here? Raise your, raise your hand, let the rest of them know I'm not. And first time I'd ever seen it, I've seen it once since then. And I've been in a lot of church meetings. I believe that this church right here is going to walk into that. I believe this is an end time church. Yeah. I believe that because of your pastors we have here. I call pastors, I call Pastor Lance and Pastor Missy. If you're here on Wednesday nights and you see what God has put on that young lady's life, the anointing that's on her life, the anointing that's on our pastor, uh, we're a blessed congregation. Amen. We really are we're blessed. Yeah. He can only go as far as we're ready to go. Right. You know, I mean, he, God can't take, and, and he's, I, I just believe he's wanting to go a little deeper with us. Amen. And so that's kind of what I'm going to minister about today. Is, and, and I just pray that God would open our eyes and open our ears that we could see and hear and understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Because mm -hmm. I know you love the Lord, and it's love. It's it's just a balance in you. But there's more. We have to keep seeking. We have to keep asking. And we have to keep knocking. Had a young lady in our community, 25, died in a car accident. We don't have no answer for that, you know. Except there's a bunch of sad people this morning, you know, a family that's lost a loved one. I, I lost a brother, and he was 21, and, and he had a little baby. And um, six weeks later, Linda lost her brother in a car accident. And so, see, it's you, you never know when you're going to need God and how bad you're going to need Him. Well, let me tell you, there's a gap there, and there's a sadness there, and there's a hole there, and I don't know how people make it through without God. I really don't. I, I, don't know, I just don't know. And my heart goes out to him. But I'm here to talk to you this morning, and I just want to uh, let you know that the power of the Holy Spirit, He's wanting to do something in your lives, and, and you just can't give up. He's wanting to strengthen your inner man. And if you put up Ephesians 3 for me, and the, and the 12th, uh, start with the 12th verse there, He's wanting you uh, to be an end time church. He's wanting, we got to have more. That's just, let me put it that way. Uh, I can stand up here all morning and tell you about ISIS, tell you about the Mexican drug lords that's in here, and, and uh, the white trash, and the black trash.
trash and, and we could just really sum up that we're, it's a hopeless case, but it's not with Christ. Amen. It's not. It's not hopeless. It's just a good time to get in a fight. Amen. Amen. And it is a fight. It's a good time to get into this. But in the in Ephesians here, he says, in whom we have boldness and excess with confidence by the faith in him. Now, so, it's not a beautiful song here this morning about worship, but I don't believe we have the faith we need to really go where Pastor Lance wants to take us right now. I just, I believe we're, we're a little bit afraid. Well, I believe we're a whole bunch afraid. <laughs> I don't think a little bit covered. I think we're a whole bunch afraid to trust God and have faith in what God wants to do in our lives. And I can say that because it doesn't matter the numbers, but are we being a witness? You know, we can do all kinds of things to get people to come to church, but then when trials and tribulations or death hits, you know, the Bible says, what's going to separate you from God? And we see people fall by the wayside. And I believe it's because they don't understand the Word of God or the power of the Holy Spirit. In, in part. I believe that with all my heart. I've seen it. And it's not something you can naturally... You gotta sit in the spiritual realm. You gotta sense it. You just gotta believe that God is God and what God says is true. And then He will prove Himself to you. So I want I want you to uh, go in, the, in John 15 and the, in the fourth uh, verse. Or, and you don't have to go there, but He says, uh, "If you abide in Me, I'm gonna abide in you." And here's the key to the power of the Holy Spirit is sticking with God. I used to be in prayer meetings or Bible studies or wherever they were at when I could get there. As I've gotten older, I've, I've slowed down a little bit. But I want you to encourage you that you need to be in a Bible study somewhere. Right. You need to be staying in the Word of God. Because someday it's going to knock on your door. And it's going to knock hard. You know? Uh, I had an incident in my home this week that I'm not going to go into, but it knocked hard on my door. It shut my foundation. Uh, a number of years ago, I was in a normal accident, and they told me I'd never be normal again. It shut my foundation. Told me to go get a new life. And I liked the life I had. I didn't want a new life they were telling me about. I didn't want to live in pain and, and not be able to remember things, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to go through all that. So I got angry. That's the first thing I did. Then I had to get over that so God could minister to me. And I don't say I'm whole completely, uh, but I'm here. Amen. And I'm making sense. I have enough sense to know that God is my source. Amen. Amen. And so when we worship God, you just can't have fall in love with somebody. When you worship God, you've got to go all the way. Amen. And when you start limiting Him, you're doubting Him. When you're doubting Him, you're, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. And so I want to encourage you today that this, it's got to smell like fried chicken. It's good. You've got to know it's good. And there's going to be stuff coming at you. And let me tell you, it's going to come anyway. That's right. I had stuff coming me forever I got saved. I just thought it was the way it was. But we have power to overcome. And my confidence is not in myself or not in my ability, but it's He that dwells within me. He that sits on my inner man. And I want to skip down here. Well, let's just let me read the rest of this. For I just thought that you think not at my tribulations for you, uh, for you, which is your glory. You know, people look around and they say, well, if you're a Christian, why are you going through all that? Why are you suffering like that? Well, I'm going to tell you, God makes us a way of escape. God in us is going to show us how to overcome this stuff. He's going to give us the glory. I'm going to show you that in the scripture here. How many like to fight? Not a person in here. That's not a good situation. How many like to get in a good argument once in a while? Every now and then, I just got tired of being bored and I have to start one. <laughs> I do. I, I mean, I like a good discussion. Yeah. You see, if you're going to be that timid, shame on you. I'm going to tell you, shame on you, man. Because there's people going to hell. And the next person that goes to hell could be seeing someone you know. 
because I was too timid to tell them about Jesus. In other words, I'm too proudful. In other words, I don't have confidence in God. I kind of got mine eating that. See, a lot of us are saved. That's where we stop. But there's more to, to being saved uh, or to salvation than just uh, uh, being saved. You can get saved and sit on the bench and end up right in hell. That's right. Or you can stand up and be a man and a woman in Christ Jesus and you can tell someone about Jesus. This is the ground we stand on. Where I plant my foot, I own. My house don't belong to the devil. It belongs to me. I don't have beer. I don't have alcohol. I don't have pornography. And I don't allow that stuff in my car around me or any place else. And that's the way it is. Amen. And if that offends you, I'm not sorry. Amen. My Christ died that I could uh, overcome that stuff. The jealousy, backbiting. And, and I'm, just, I'm just fed up with it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I've raised... I raised some kids that are a little bit rebellious. I got cousins that are a little bit rebellious. And no one wants to tell them. Until Kent Perry come along and I told them, man, if you don't quit doing that, you're going to rot in hell. Well, what if you offend them? They're going to be offended in hell. The church needs to stand up. And you are the church. You gotta have confidence in God that you can open your mouth and what comes out of you, you're being fed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And not be ashamed of what you say. Amen. See, I think it's time that somebody besides a few of us got on fire in this building. Amen. Church is sitting around, they're not saying anything about ISIS. They're not saying anything about abortion. We're not saying anything about the sex changes because we don't want to be offensive. Right. So let's just let them go to hell. Well, I'm offended. Amen. I don't I don't mind. I used to fight all the time. And when I got saved, I went to the county and said, you know what's the matter with you? I said, no. She said, you're, you're discouraged because you don't know how to tell your congregation to go to hell. In other words, I was being passive. Instead of standing up and saying, this is wrong and that is wrong, I chose to be passive and try to get you to like me more than you like Christ. Mm. Now, I don't mean to be hard this morning, but I think it's time that we opened our eyes and got our hearts right and looked on what we're here for. God called us to worship Him, not to praise Him. That's right. God called us to love Him. God called us to draw close to Him. Now, if you're going to sit out there, that's all you're ever going to do is shame on you again. Amen. So we got to get up. we got to get off our bump. And we got to get some guts. Amen. Holy Ghost, you know how that comes? That comes by prayer. Amen. Comes by fasting. And it comes by unity. Sometimes the bully I'm facing is just really too big for me to handle myself. So I have to go get my worship. And then we all get together and we pray to God and God hears us and God sends the angels to take care of that situation. But sometimes it's too big for one person. Amen. Other words, you have to swallow your pride and say, I need help. Right. you got to be humble. And it don't matter if you're a female or if you're what you are, but you just walk up to someone and you say, I need help. Can you pray for me? But we got this sexual thing that we haven't crucified our flesh, that most women are scared to death to be around a Christian man. Mm -hmm. That's right. I see women all the time, and I try to give them a Christian hug, and they're, they're just they're like, man, get away from me. I know what you're up to, and I think, they think that's sad. Yeah. That man cannot crucify themselves, get close enough to God to crucify the flesh that can be a Christian human being. That's right. That's right. Shame on the church. Now you know why I didn't have a big congregation. <laughs> but it's the truth. I'm not here. I'm not here to be like. I'm here to tell the truth. Some of you are in trouble. I've been there. I've had lust as a pastor. 
But I knew how to get ready because I read the word. I knew how to deal with the spirit that was trying to seduce me because I read the word. I believe that there are disembodied spirits out here. I believe it's familiar spirits, seducing spirits, evil spirits, all kinds of spirits out here that want to drag me right back where I came from and I refuse. Not I, but he in me. Amen. He in me refused to let him do it. So it says here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to straighten. Now, if you go to the uh, sixth chapter of Ephesians, and you look at the, I think it's the first verse there, it says, it says, finally, brother, finally, brother, be strong. You get it up, I get the right word, abide it? No, okay, that's strong. But anyway, it says, finally, brother, abide in me. What's that word finally mean? It means for what time you have left, it's time to be strong. Can we get it up there? If you're obey your parents in the Lord, that's not the right scripture. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's when that I got it here, I'll find it. 610. 610. Father, I'm very strong in the Lord and part of his mind. God equips us. Now, this, I, I'm not going to take much time this morning. I'm not, I don't want to rattle. But I want to get a point across that this is all we're ever going to have unless we change our lives. I don't like where I'm at personally. I haven't cast down any devils in probably 10 years. The only dead person I've raised is myself. I used to speak in tongues a lot, but I've got stale. I lay hands on sick, and sometimes they get well, and sometimes they don't. The pastor gives an altar call, and I just kind of sit there. Now, there's something to do in here, it's on fire for the Lord. But there's a big group of us that need to be encouraged. You need to get over being timid, being shy. In other words, you never get over being ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's what it amounts to. When I first got saved, it was hard for me to pray because I was going to be embarrassed if someone said to me. Can you ever like that? And then I got to the point where I could do that and I, I kind of wanted to raise my hands and man, what if someone looks at me? See, I, I had this to deal with. Well, what if I pray for someone and and, and they don't get healed? Well, what if they do? Right. A man come out of my house one night about 1230. I wasn't in the ministry. I just had, hadn't been saved too long. And he really come to see my wife. His wife was in the hospital. And he says to uh, Linda, you want to know if he could talk to Linda? I answered the door and I said yes. I went and got Linda and he said, Linda, he said, my wife's in the hospital with coma. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, if you could come and just sing to her, that she would wake up and talk to me. And she said, and I want to know if you'll come to the hospital and pray for her. And uh, she said, yes, our sing her. So we went down there, and it's a Boone Hospital in Columbia, Missouri. We went down and, and uh, we did just that. I was standing back. I, you know, I thought, man, I don't know about this one. You know, I really did. That's what I was thinking. I've never heard anything like this before. And so he walked in and he went to talking to his wife. And he says, Linda, would you start singing? And she started singing worship, a deep worship song. See, if you get to know my wife and get in some meetings with her, you'll find that when she starts singing, the Holy Spirit follows the anointing of God comes down. You don't have to. It's there. You'll, you'll sense it. Amen. You know? And you'll get to do that one of these days. Well, see, the point I'm saying is that's what God wanted to do with some of you in here. You know, and I can't, I can't sing. I'm not his king. But, but there's stuff God wants to do with you in here that's fun, that will make you feel good about yourself, make you feel good about God. But being timid is it's not going to get it. You see, I, you just got to get over being afraid. I don't know how you do that, except by the power of the Holy Spirit. And to do that, you've got to spend time with Him. Right. 
That's, that's, there's no shortcut here, you know. There just isn't any shortcut. It's like you got to spend time with God. you got to talk to Him. How many want the baptism of the Holy Ghost to tell speaking in tongues? You see it? Yes. Okay. How many have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? One. See, a lot of churches, you, you couldn't ask this. Because it might embarrass someone or offend someone or, you know. Well, I don't know. Maybe you're Baptist, maybe you're Pentecost. I don't know why you are. I just know you love the Lord. I know speaking in tongues won't get you to heaven. I know a lot of people speak in tongues and their fruits don't show signs of having the Holy Spirit. That's right. Thank you. That just doesn't show just does it. But God's wanting to, to pour out His Spirit upon this body of believers. He's wanting to give you more than you have. He's wanting to take you to a deeper realm. But until you start asking, pastor's hands are tied, the Holy Spirit will not force itself on you. He will not take you to a place you do not want to go. And so it says, Finally, brother, for what time you have left here on earth, this is a good day to get hungry for the power of the Holy Spirit. If I took my kids to a bus stop and I didn't have peace with them getting on that bus or something inside me said, don't do that. If something in my inner man spoke to me and says, don't do that, my kids wouldn't get on that bus. I believe we can drive down the road and God can warn us of things that are ahead of us. I believe that I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen to lots of people. It's happened to me a couple of times. God has spoke, don't do that. I know because I didn't obey him a couple of times and I paid the price. So God's wanting to move in you. He said, this is not something that Look, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, or I can speak in tongues, or I got this gift or that gift. This is something very, very special. When you walk into a house and you sit down, my brother come to me, have a whole bunch of Catholics on one side of the family, love them, they're good people, but lost. And they were trying to get him to join the Catholic church, and he come to me and asked me about it. And I started talking to him, and I was telling him stuff I didn't know I knew. I just, I just had no idea. And I was standing there listening to myself wondering where that came from. Amen. When you walk in to visit someone and you can read their mail, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit just moves on. He wants to show. He wants, to, he wants them to know that He is God. And I've had people, and some of you even here know what I'm talking about. Said, well, how would you know that? When pastor gets up here and ministers and, and someone gets saved, they say, man, who told you that was in my life? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. You see, it, it says in, the, in uh, I think it's the uh, sixth chapter there, the uh, Ephesians, you know, what is the, the, the width and, and what is the, the height and what is the, the depth, you know, and talking about God's love. You see, as long as we're here on earth, we're never going to know the fullness of God's anything. We just won't. He's, it's, just too, it's just too mighty for us. And so I guess my challenge here this morning to you is, is who's going to change and who's going to, who's going to come on into the, to the power of the Holy Spirit or are we just going to be a, another church? Now I'm not saying not doing good things. But I'm saying there's empty seats. And we go seeking God, He draws them in. He draws them in. And so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to see here this morning is that we need God. We need we need bad. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Now in First Peter three, and, and I'm going to start with the ninth verse here. It says, "Not remembering evil for evil, nor rating for rating, but counter of wise blessings, knowing that." Ye are therefore called that you should inherit a blessing. What's a blessing? What's God worried about? He said, first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and, 
and his righteousness, and he would add all things into you. Well, I think it's time to start seeking the kingdom of God. Now, some of you are wealthier or have more money than other people. This is not about middle class or upper class or lower class. That's right. it's just, this is not what God's about. It, he is not about money. He's not about fame. He's not about glory. He's about our soul. He's about people that want him to reach out and bring in those that are lost and dying. And he wants you to know this morning, if you're sitting here and you're having trouble overcoming something in your life, you don't have to put up with that. You don't have to get up every morning and look yourself in the mirror and say, well, I failed again yesterday, Lord. He wants to set you free from that. He wants to show you. But you have to go to God to get it. You can go to all the counselors you want. Go to all the pastors you want. Go to all the worship meetings you want. But do you spend time with God out of the park of His Holy Spirit by prayer, right? Yep. Fasting, and maybe getting a prayer party, partner you can trust? That's what it's going to take to break it. Been there. I tried that on my own. I thought, you know what? I can, I can, I can defeat this this anxiety. I can, I can hand, I can tell my mind to stop this. And it came, and it came, and I couldn't stop it. I had to go to God to get help. Ain't that, ain't that good? We, we know someone to get help. But we have to know how to go get it. You have to want it. Now there's Becky and her husband sitting back there, and they look like they love each other. I, 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 but yeah, he's going like this. But, but you know, that's what you have to do with God. You they they have to spend time together to keep their relationship. My wife told me this week she can I love you with all my heart. Well, I said, that's good, that's good to know after 48 years, you know. Good to know. You have to come together as, as a unit here with God. You have to you have to submit to God. And he's called you to a blessing. He's called you to a promise. He wants you to be free. And the reason some of us are not free in the spirit realm is because we're all bound up in the flesh realm. Yep. We're all bound up. And God wants to free us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, how many... I know no one wants to fight in here. Well, that's, that's good. I, we don't want to fight among ourselves, but there's a warfare coming. In the fifth and the sixth chapter, and I'm going to read this to you. It's already here. It ain't coming. If I can find it, if I have it written here, and I don't. But it talks about uh, the, the whales of the devil. We fight, against, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And, and the, the whales are the schemes that the devil has. I'm going to ask you, why, why, is this, why is this that we have so many different denominations that do not believe certain parts of the Bible? And who give those people the right to say that this part doesn't belong, and this part doesn't belong, and that part doesn't belong? I picked up the Bible, and it's so important to me that everything lined up. I mean, I, had to, I didn't know I could believe everything in the Bible. It was just something was I wanted to know. I had to, it just something important to me as a person. I, I, I just couldn't handle part of it not being right. We had the, and, and even in Pentecost, you know how many different denominations of Pentecost there are? Because there's not unity. And then we want a lot of 60% of the body of Christ is in divorce. Okay? So we, we the only way we're going to have the unity is by the is by falling in love with the Holy Spirit by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. That's that's the only way. That's the only way you're going to grow. That's the only way you're going to be able to keep your family intact. You know, I raised six foster kids, and I've got some out there. I'm telling you, they're they're just they do not like me. That's just point blank. At this point in their life, they do not like me. Now they do. I said, this is not coming in the home. I'm, we just won't do that here. 
And we, we're not going to do that here. Well, praise God, I'm not the only one that feels that way. Amen. You know, that Christ set the rules. I didn't. But I understand why he said some of them. They're for protection. And that's what I tried to tell the kids. But they wanted to fall in love. They couldn't overcome self to enough to get a hold of the blood of Christ and what he'd done for us on Calvary. And why? And, and if you'd have been here one Wednesday night when Missy was teaching on uh, sexual, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's a lesson on, on uh, why we shouldn't do things and why when people have an affair, fornication or adultery, what it does and how it follows them through life. And, and I, I hope they teach that to the youth, and I hope I can have my, my boys here. I'm going to tell you, that was, that was one of the most awesome lessons, I believe, that, that I've sat under. And I've sat under some good ones, I thought. But there's nothing that's, that, you know, sin, any, any type of sin in our life that's going to affect us, young people. Well, what about hormones? Well, what about someone that overeats like me? You know, what about smoking? What about drinking? What about these little sins? Well, sin is sin. It just is. He know it, we can't okay it. Now, where am I going to go with this? I'm going to say, I'm, I've got to get over God. Pray for me. I'm not here to judge him. I'm here to say there's help for us in God. There's help for us in God. The part of the Holy Spirit, he's wanting to get excited. He's, he's wanting you to get excited. He's wanting you to reach out and say, God, I don't understand some of the things in the Bible, but I need your power to really, truly get a hold of it. If it's real, give it to me. I want the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when I got saved, I said, I want the real thing. And I had a lot of things come at me that weren't real. But a lot of it was real. God sorted it out. You have to trust God. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to ask if there's anybody here this, this morning that does not know God or does not know Jesus Christ our Savior, if you would like to come forward. Anybody?